Hello everyone, today we're working on this SD40. We are going to um, convert it to DCC and we're also going to be adding ditch lights to it. So at the end of the video, I'm going to be putting this up uh, on my website. It's uh, watchtrainsnow.com and you can purchase this engine. It's going to be priced at $100 with $17 uh, shipping. So let's get started. I've already uh, cleaned and lubricated this engine in the past. So we can go straight. I, I know it's a good running engine. So we can go straight to doing the uh, the conversion. So like, let's take a look at the engine a little bit. It's got a uh, micro trains conversion. So that's really neat. Remove the shell, these you could use the box method, or there's two little tabs here that you can pull on. Now, this is something I've never done before. This is the old style, um, the old style frame. These used to have uh, blue boxes, the old style frame, which is not DCC friendly. So, uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to this. But these old style frames, they sure are good runners. So, um, let's just take a look at our decoder. Years ago, I did not have a DCC controller, so I would remove these and uh, make the engines go back to DC. Now, with these, um, I tested them on a previous episode, and these uh, still work. So, it's a really small decoder, uh, if I remember correctly, it's Digitrax, and that means I don't have too much to do too much milling from the frame, but it's probably going to sit in here, so I'm going to have to mill it just a little bit in this area. I will be using uh, this blue wire here, which is an accessory wire, to run my ditch lights. So um, I have to have I have to add an extra uh, resistor. So I have to make room for that too as I do at uh, the milling. So this light shield I can reuse. That's good to have. But these little boards, they're going to be put aside. I won't be needing them anymore. So now I just have to come up with a plan. So I'm going to mill the frame a little bit here. I basically just have to remove that little thing. I'm going to go down maybe a bit further just for an insurance and to give me enough room to put my uh, my dish light in. So I'm just going to use the Sharpie. It's, uh, it's the other brand but uh, it does the same job just to make a, a guide for where to cut because I don't want to cut too deep and this part of the frame here could be fragile so i'm gonna make a nice nice cut here it's the not the ditch light that i need to make room for but really is um, really is the resistor for the ditch lights and then i make a nice cut like that that should give me plenty of room to make that work now the reason the best way I found to make a cut like that is with the hacksaw and that makes a lot of uh, shrapnel so you do not want to do that with everything assembled like that you want to disassemble everything so you can get to uh, you can clean it up afterwards We'll just remove the fuel tank and then we'll remove these two screws that hold everything back together I'm gonna use my box just to hold everything in because I do not want to lose any components some of these components are still available though but you still don't want to lose them we'll just put everything together there Keep 
track of everything. If uh, it, this engine, I know my way around this engine is one of my favorite engines. And to be honest, they're pretty simple. But should you forget how it's put together, don't pull on these. I've seen some of these with broken tabs. And uh, it's a pain because you have to put your trucks back every time you lift the locomotive. But uh, just uh, spread out the, the frame a little bit. Don't worry about which way they go because they have a, an arrow. There's a little arrow there that goes towards the coupler. So it's very easy to work on, I think. And then we'll just push, push these little pins through. These four little pins hold the motor cradle together. We'll just put them through, push them through. And that should release your frame half. There's two insulators here, so we'll be removing these so we don't lose them. Because I am, uh, I've got to um, hold, hold this in my vise while, uh, while I work on the frame. So just to make sure that the little insulators don't uh, get damaged while I'm doing that. And also these brass pins, they, they use for uh, weight, um, noise reduction. So you do want them, you want to keep them. But while I'm working hard uh, on the frame, I don't want to bend them or lose them. So we'll be removing them too. It's not very hard to do. Uh, just go easy and gentle on them. And we'll move that insulator as well. So there, my frame is there. And then you have the drive line. I actually do that on purpose. I'll keep the uh, the rear one close to the rear and the front one close to the front. I keep the uh, the way I know which way is the front is the front is always lower because of the the short nose the short the low short nose and same thing with the motor the motor has an order in which way it goes also so you want to be mindful of that there's a, one of the magnets is painted so yeah it's nice to have the video so i can go back and see which way it was oriented we'll be doing some work on the motor for sure to convert it to dcc but uh, as you can see, this magnet is painted, so that goes up, goes up in the frame. So let's uh, just keep that in mind. And then that's also ready to be worked on. Excellent. So I just need to cut here. And that will be that. And this one I just need to cut here, and that will be that. So I'm going to get to work on that. I got a brand new hacksaw blade, so that should make everything easy now. So, a brand new hacksaw blade uh, versus uh, the cattle frame. It uh, didn't take long, let's just say it wasn't a fair fight. Then I'll take my Dremel and I'll clean it up. should be plenty of room for my decoder. In fact, it's about the same size as the little printed circuit board from, uh, from the engine. Basically just need to make an extra little bit of room for my resistor. So that works out great. Now, I don't know if you guys remember the conventions for uh, wiring in an engine. These are the instructions from a very similar uh, decoder. So the black and red are the track feed and then the gray and orange uh, go to the motor. So we'll be focusing on that for now. It's going to give me the opportunity to test it 
and uh, change the address and all that stuff make sure everything's working okay and after that I'm gonna put uh, some uh, LEDs on it um, mainly uh, also dish lights so I've got the yellow white and blue for the front and rear light and then F1 which is an accessory so I uh, green the green for F1 which is an accessory so I plan to use that for uh, my ditch lights as you can see I've got the black and red and then the orange and gray and then I've got the three wires for uh, the lights I'm not seeing my accessory uh, lead so I might uh, just hook up the ditch lights with the front light. That is no big deal. I wish I had some uh, gray wire, but I had to use this black one instead of the gray. So that uh, goes to the motor along with the orange. Now I'm going to reassemble everything, connect the decoder to the track, and we'll see if I can get it going. Very important that you put kept on tape anywhere the wire could get in contact with the frame. The decoder, the controller, your DCC controller sends full power to the track. So you definitely don't want your motor to contact that. Now I'm going to reunite this with the motor. Remember the white magnet uh, goes on top. Just going to reunite this together. I'm not going to snap it in uh, just yet because I want to put my two worm gears. Just wanted to get them started uh, in their proper slot there. So as I snap it in, they will go in nice and easy. Just double check everything and then we'll bring in the other side of the frame. I made a small indentation in the frame here just to pass the wire that helps me line up all my motor uh, correctly. I did the same thing on the other side. So far so good. I'm going to bring in the rest of the hardware that's necessary to make the locomotive run. So I'll start with the contact strips and then I'll use the fuel tank to hold them in place. It's really easy once you uh, do it a couple times you get the hang of it. These are actually meant to be easy for the people at the factory to put together. So that, there's an arrow showing you the way. This one goes that way. And the other one goes the other way. Now we bring in the screws. They kind of have a direction also. So I'll just start them. I won't uh, tighten them just yet. I've got still another operation I need to do. So these I'll just start them. Perfect. That's okay if the trucks fall out. I uh, I need to have everything loose at this point. There's no need to worry about that too much now. We'll worry about that later. So I've got my decoder connected to the motor. That is a very important thing to do. And then I've got to connect my decoder to the track. So I'm going to do that the lazy way. I'll just use a tiny little piece of cardboard and just sandwich them on each side like that. And that's going to give me a track power. Now you should put some uh, kept on tape uh, on here also. 
so your decoder doesn't contact the frame. I had some electrical tape, so I used that. So uh, let's go try that on the track. So let's see what happens. So let's just go to the program track and let's see what happens. We'll go program on the program track. Enter. Standard. Manufacturer 99, that's excellent. Enter. Decoder version 46. So that I can go look it up uh, on Google and find out uh, what the version is. Enter. I set up address yes. Short address 003. Let me just look up my cab number. Then long address yes. It's going to be uh, 6338. address for sure and then we'll just skip uh, everything else and then that's it escape and then let's see what we got if it's going to work forward Oh, beautiful. Look at that. I also got the motor in the proper uh, direction. So that is good news. Direction. Awesome. Nice and quiet as ever. I'm going to run it a little bit just like that, just for fun. Alright, so now that I got, got it going, I can worry about some other stuff. So I looked up online, um, manufacturer. A 99 is a lens and version 46 is this little guy right here and that with that information I was able to download the instructions so that gives me access to all the info how to wire it all the CVs what everything does so that is really neat so that if you did choose to purchase this engine, the instructions will be going with it. I would also like to make the wiring <coughs> a little bit neater. So I will try to have the power pickups uh, more on the middle. More on the middle of the, the engine. And then have them uh, just be uh, just a little bit neater like that. Now I've got my wire set in a much neater way but it's important to test uh, every time you make any changes important to test that everything is working and it is working nice so that's good well 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 now I have to worry about my ditch lights so what I want to do here is I'm probably gonna run the wires in that space between the sill and the handrails over here so that will hide my wires I'll be very happy if I can do that so I'm going to take uh, the shell apart and then we'll take another look see how feasible that is now to take the shell apart 
you just need to press on these little pins so for me they're already loose um, the windows hold the uh, the shell together and these two little pins here once you have the back part of it it becomes easier and then don't forget about your handrails you just have to release them so they don't uh, break that would be bad so you don't uh, don't give them a chance to break just release them and that's that so put that on the side and then these usually split up pretty easily or you can pry on the second step and this has a very nice uh, micro trains conversion on it well worth the money and made in the USA so very few things are made in the USA anymore lots of things are shipped out to China so I would like to run the wires let me get that to refocus I would like to run the wires in this area here so let's take a look at my LEDs so this is what you need to order 0603 at uh, 12 volt white and specify a uh, width resistor because we are going to use that today. I tested them all um, before I, I installed them. I always test them. Um, it would be a shame to spend all the time installing them and find out they are bad. On that topic, you should buy more than what you need. They're not that expensive, so get a whole bunch. So if uh, one of them is bad, then uh, you can just uh, put another one in. Okay, so let's make the holes uh, in the pilot beam. If you don't have a jeweler's drill like this, get one. I use mine all the time. So I'm going to want the wire to come into that little pocket here, which is not being used. So I'm going to use that to bring in my, uh, my wires. So I'm going to use my jeweler's drill i'm going to make a hole right here you can barely see the holes which uh, i guess that was the idea actually came in from behind like this because uh, that makes it uh, easier and have a better symmetry of everything so that worked out great for everybody i think when i put the uh the wires through i'm going to angle the leds just a little bit out like that so that should look awesome so everything's moving along um now to put the wires through i have to unsolder this resistor in fact i'm going to wire everything in series let me just show you how that works so everybody makes these beginner videos, but I think there's not too many uh, beginners anymore in model railroading. I look at my demographics, everybody's 65 or older. Anyways, the, uh, the, the, the parallel circuit, let's say we have two LEDs here, you can wire them like that. And then this one gets a plus and this one gets a minus. So that's parallel and then if you go in series you have your power source and then you have your two leds so just wire them like that so there's less wiring and all the two light bulbs get the same voltage they're the same brightness which is what i want so we're going to wire them in series like that so you have to thread these in there like I always say, take your time. Just thread them in. And there's your ditch light. I'll do the same thing for the other side. Now this is a, questions that, a question that I have. These wires are very thin about the thickness of a hair. So I'm wondering if it's going to interfere with my handrail. So we're about to find out. I can see the tiniest little crack here. But that's how fine the tolerances are with Kado. 
you know, if you have the width of a hair of something, it gets them out of place. But this is tolerable, so I'm not going to make any changes to that. That's actually really good news. I can live with this. This is tolerable. I like it. Now, all I got to worry about is uh, wiring in my LEDs. I connected my small resistor to the blue, which is the common, and from what I remember, would be uh, the positive side, so the red wire. So I'm going to test this out before uh, I go any further by connecting the rear headlight uh, to the yellow here. I'm just testing that I read my instructions correctly but that works perfectly so I can just um, wire everything. So it runs good, so that's perfect. So everything's coming together now. I have to worry about doing some insulation. Um, this is what I use, liquid tape. I picked that up from the Home Depot. So I use that to protect my wires. I've got to insulate this area here and this area here because if I get a short circuit, it would be bad. Now that looks like a big mess of wires, but uh, we are getting somewhere. Look at that. Look at that. This is so cool. So that was a lot of work, but uh, I'll say uh, well worth the effort. I even repaired the little handrail for you here. I repaired that. So if you want to buy that, it's going to be, if you want to buy this engine, it's going to be on my website, watchtrainsnow.com. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.